Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RoboBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So today I'm going to talk about my thoughts on Adobe Lightroom 6 slash Lightroom CC. I know a lot of people have already done a review on this. The thing about when people review a piece of software only a day or two after it's been out that bothers me is it's one thing to do a, a video that's here's my first impressions, here's my first thoughts on it, or a preview video like a lot of people did, that's fine. But to do an actual review that quickly after something's come out means you haven't really given it a chance. You haven't really gotten to use it that much yet. Um, with hardware, that's a little different sometimes, and you can make uh, some reasonable you know, thoughts and analysis based on using it for the first time, so on and so forth. But with software, you really need to play with it. You need to experiment. You need to try different things. You need to use it as much as you can. And uh, after a while of getting heavily into Lightroom and putting together some new raw edits that I haven't released yet for you guys, editing some of the shots that I've been doing lately, and also going back over some of my old shots and doing some things a little differently and setting up the facial recognition stuff, I now have some thoughts that I can come back to you with after using Lightroom 6 slash Lightroom CC because I have the Creative Cloud, um, and I can tell you what I really think about it. Now, I haven't gotten to use every single feature yet. I have not gotten to use HDR because, frankly, that's just something I haven't been taking advantage of because of the type of cameras I have and also because I haven't seen the need to. And because I'm a Photoshop guy, I have the ability to create faux HDR in Photoshop, but I like the option of merging photos and being able to do HDR effects in Lightroom now. And that's going to challenge me as a photographer to do more with it. So that's something I have that I can tell you that I think is really interesting about the new Lightroom, which I'm just going to say Lightroom CC from now on. And um, I think that's super cool. The feature that I'm taking the most advantage of is the facial recognition because I do mostly portrait photography. So this is helping me sort things and deal with it in a whole new way. It's a lot easier. For cosplay stuff, I can do it based on the costume if I don't know the model's name. Uh, for weddings, this is going to be a lot easier to be able to identify people and give them the shots they need and organize the photo albums later and do stuff for family reunions, same deal. Uh, for personal family portraits, same deal as well. So that's the feature that I care about probably the most aside from the performance enhancements. So that's going to work out very well for me. The stuff that they've done under the hood with the performance enhancements, a lot of you know I'm getting a new laptop. It's probably going to be another Asus laptop. Uh, I'm holding out for the 2016 MacBook Pro. That's the reason why. Um, I'll talk about what I think about the 2016 MacBook Pro and why I think it's going to happen to the processors in 2016 that will explain why I'm holding out for that as a video and photography and graphic design guy. There's a reason behind that. In the meantime, Asus has been good to me. I'm going to stick with Asus for my interim laptop over the next two to three years. Um, and I know it's going to last longer than that. But anyway, going back to the Lightroom stuff, the reason I bring that up is for that Asus laptop that I'm getting, Lightroom's going to take it to the max because it's going to use that uh, GPU to the mask. It's going to take advantage of the processing power in a better way. So it's going to be more efficient than it's ever been. It's going to be faster even on a um, budget machine. It's still going to be fast because it's using everything that machine has to offer. So that's something that they've done under the hood that I'm really happy about. I'm not going to honestly be using the slideshow features as much. The uh, video presentation features, even the stuff for print books. Part of that's because I'm a video editing guy and I'm a graphic designer, so I can use better dedicated programs for that kind of thing. Um, in the Adobe suite, as it is, I have Creative Cloud. I'll take advantage of all of it. But for those of you who are purely photographers, you might actually like those features. The new uh, video feature, if you want to put background music and put up a slideshow, it will sync the uh, stuff transitionally to the beat. That's going to be very cool for you. Um, some of the new web gallery features, again, graphic designer, web designer, I can do other things with that. But for the rest of you guys, that's going to be very helpful. I might still take advantage of that because I might decide that I want to do something different in terms of how I put up an online gallery to show clients something on the back end. So I may use that. I don't know. But it is there, and you should take advantage of it. It does in HTML5, which is going to help you on the mobile side for scalability and responding to smartphones, so that's very cool. Speaking of smartphones, if you have Lightroom CC like I do, you get to take advantage of the iPad or your Android device now and Lightroom Mobile. And I think that's tremendous, especially if you have a camera with Wi-Fi. I don't yet, 
but you know there's a lot that you can do with that that's going to really help speed up your workflow there are ways that i plan to take advantage of it as it is there is a new camera that i'm going to be buying this year i'm going to be investing in either a 5500 or a 7200 both of those have wi-fi so i will be using lightroom mobile a lot more once that happens but i'm enjoying lightroom mobile right now i love the uh the improvements and that syncs up uh to the creative cloud desktop so that's going to help me a lot with my mobile workflow going forward uh, so that's amazing overall i would say that this is a strong upgrade especially if you're on an older version of lightroom uh, Lightroom 5, I still feel, was a very good upgrade. I still feel it was tremendous. Uh, a lot of people disagree about that, but I think that it was a very strong upgrade, and I think that the newest version of Lightroom, whether you have Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC, is a very strong upgrade and that's worthwhile for all the performance enhancement features. If you're on the Creative Cloud, the, um, the connectivity and that, and the fact that whenever upgrades come, you're going to get those obviously and of course the main reason to upgrade to a new version of Lightroom is always the support for new camera models as they come out so uh, I would definitely jump on that if I were you now the age-old debate do I get the subscription or do I own it outright look at $9.99 a month if you're a serious photographer if you're making any kind of money at it or even if you're a hobbyist I can't tell you how many hobbies I have that I wish cost $10 a month but for $10 a month you would get Photoshop CC and you would get Lightroom and all the updates uh, yeah, it's a no-brainer. If you're making any kind of money, I don't want to hear you crying about paying Adobe something every month. It's, what, 30, 30 cents a day? 30 cents a day, is that what, it, I think the math breaks out to like 30, 33 cents a day uh, at $9.99 a month, 33 cents a day. Are you not going to dig in the couch cushions and find that to be able to uh, get the most out of your shots? Really? To have Photoshop? and Lightroom, you can't find 33 cents every day in the couch cushions, really. Uh, but again, that's a jab, and if I offend anybody, if I hurt your feelings, I, I'm gonna apologize. I kinda don't want to, but I'm going to to be polite. But uh, seriously, that's just my thought. Everything is going to the subscription thing. It's like, if you don't like it, get over it. But Adobe is giving you a choice here. You can get Lightroom 6, and then when you wanna buy a new camera, you can then boohoo and have to buy Lightroom 7 instead of just being on Creative Cloud and just getting all the updates. But anyway, those are my thoughts on Lightroom CC and Lightroom 6. Uh, I think that this is great. I think the Adobe team did a solid release on this. I'm looking forward to using it more. You're gonna be getting more Lightroom raw edits from me and seeing how I use it. I'm gonna do some more behind the scenes stuff on my photo shoots. I'm going to a couple of conventions this year. I'm going to an amazement. I'm going to HeroCon, I'm going to MomoCon, I'm going to PepCon uh, to go do speaking actually at PepCon, but I'm also going to shoot some stuff while I'm there. I'm going to DragonCon later in the year and we'll see if I do some other stuff. I might end up at the InDesign conference and Photoshop conference in November. So there's a lot of opportunities for me to do a lot of shooting and a lot of editing. So I'm going to be bringing more of that to the channel and taking you on that journey on how I handle my creativity from the photography standpoint. So make sure you subscribe to get all of that going forward. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching and don't forget, create something awesome today.